Greetings and Happy New Year. Happy New Year. This is Derek DeBras from Munitions Group, munitionsgroup.com. Please like us on social media and subscribe to this channel so you can get all the updates as new videos come out. As I promised uh, over the last six months or so, you're going to see some new faces. You have seen some new faces. Uh, my colleagues have been joining me on this channel to talk about different things in the gun world uh, that's legal related, including the industry and some regulatory provisions. So some stuff that might not be uh, so exciting to all uh, of everybody that does subscribe to this channel, but things that are still very, very important to the industry overall, um, as well as my associate. And we've been trying to incorporate a lot more current events into our channel. So you'll see me from time to time, including today, talk about current events. I am still in the midst of a series on restoration of rights. Those of you that followed me for years now know that that's kind of my forte when it comes to gun law and where I've really cut my teeth was on helping disenfranchised felons get their civil liberties back amongst other uh, constitutional uh, services that we provide. Uh, now, with that said, today we're gonna talk about two issues. First one, relatively short, and I wanted to give my condolences uh, out there to the family and friends of Gadsden Glock, a uh, true icon of the firearms industry, started the Glock Company, um, and just a real just genius in, in when it comes down to uh, firearms manufacturing and invention, uh, really, really took the polymer pistol and, and really made it to what it is today. Um, so uh, he died on, I believe, December 27th at 94. He was pretty old, 94 years old, for those of you that did not know. And then today, uh, as, as for our second topic or current event, we're going to talk about California law. Um, so as many of you know, I'm not from California, but I am trying to make a concerted effort to look at all the current events around the country, even at the state level, because all these issues regarding gun, gun regulation, especially in a, big, in, most, in a very populous state, rather, as California, other states will look to see what they're doing and trying uh, to do when it comes to curtailing Second Amendment liberty. So there is a case uh, that kind of, or there is a case, rather, that just revolves completely around a single bill that actually takes effect in the law in California, I believe, today. And that is Senate Bill 2, which is, I will refer to as the Sensitive Places Restriction Law. Um, so just, I, you know, as you, as my subscribers have followed me over the years, many of you know, when I dig into cases, I like to actually cite from the case itself. I think the judge says it better than I could ever say it. So I'm going to do that today for a little, uh, just for a few notes here. But let me get my notes out here and I'll give you guys a rundown. So First thing is, Senate Bill 2 was introduced into the California legislature back in September. I think it was around September 12th. And that was signed into law by Governor Gavin Newsom, I think. Let's see here. That was signed into law on September 26th, according to what I have in front of me. Um, so then a, a group of concealed carry permit holders and associated organizations filed a lawsuit. Uh, what the law essentially did was, was define, if you will, 26 places as quote-unquote sensitive places. One thing the judge actually noted at the district court level when this got in front of him on a, a motion to uh, grant a, a preliminary injunction, which was granted, by the way, and this is what I'm reading from was his order. He actually noted a couple things, but one thing that I thought was uh, really interesting is that he stated California would not allow concealed carry permit holders to effectively practice what the Second Amendment promises. SB 2's coverage is sweeping, repugnant to the Second Amendment, and openly defiant of the Supreme Court. He's referring to the Bruin case, of course, in that instance. Uh, so he, he makes his, his opinion very clear right off the bat as to what he thinks of SB2 uh, and when he's getting geared up to go ahead and grant the injunction that's being requested, requested at that time. Uh, so that was U.S. District Cut Judge, Judge, I'm sorry, ugh, tongue, to, tongue, tongue toy. <laughs> sorry, guys. U.S. District Judge Cormac Carney. So for those of you who do not know how the federal judicial system works, our trial courts are what we call district courts, and our appellate courts, uh, uh, the first level of appellate courts, are what we call circuit courts, and then we have the U.S. Supreme Court. And there's a load of other federal courts mixed in and out for special causes such as admiralty law and, and, and veterans affairs and such. Uh, but those aren't relevant today. So really we're dealing here with a trial court judge who came out and said, hey, um, the plaintiffs have asked for an injunction. I'm looking at this law. I think it passes mustard for a preliminary injunction. You cannot enforce this as of right now. That was on December 20th. That injunction was issued uh, right around December 30th. The Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which oversees that district court, Judge uh, Cormac's court, or I'm sorry, Judge Carney's court, um, they said, "Hey, we're going to put an administrative stay on this injunction that was granted by the district judge until our panel of judges." can review this matter and make its own decision because the attorney general has appealed this matter to us. Uh, so right now, as it sits, unfortunately, that law does go into effect. I believe 
uh, that Judge Cormac Carney did get it correct. Uh, I do believe that he is an advocate for the Constitution, and he, he, he analyzed it correctly. What was interesting how he analyzed it, you know, he goes through and, and lists some of the, issue, the, the sensitive place issues, and he goes through each one that's at issue and says this is why it fails under the Bruin analysis. When I refer to Bruin, of course, I'm referring to the case that came out a little over a year ago uh, that basically says we're not applying a standard of the Second Amendment that's interest balancing like a lot of constitutional rights. Like, does the government's right outweigh the citizen's right? You know, I'm very much paraphrasing that, of course, and simplifying it. But that's essentially what um, what they were doing for a short amount of time. And, and Scalia in the Heller decision from 2008 made it very clear. Interest balancing is out the window. I actually argued that a few years before Bruin in the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, on a domestic violence challenge. And uh, I lost. I did get a dissent. Uh, but the dissent didn't agree with me necessarily on that. He just agreed that this, the, the Blottenberg uh, Amendment was unconstitutional on its face. Nevertheless, um, finally, Bruin did get it correct. And we don't apply, apply interest balancing. What we apply is basically a historic uh, tradition uh, analysis, right? We look at the Second Amendment and the law that's being challenged, in this instance, SB2, California's law, and say has historically understood with the Second Amendment, is there any analogy out there that would say the Founding Fathers intended this type of restriction to exist. So what the judge actually did was he literally went through each sensitive place and did that analysis and came out and said, no, um, these are repugnant to the Constitution. The injunction needs to be granted. Um, so some of the things that he, he does say I, I thought was uh, very good is he does list the ones that are at issue. So to give you guys a flavor of some of those sensitive places, hospitals, public transportation, youth centers, uh, public gatherings and special events, churches, mosques, synagogues, places of worship, financial institutions, museums are a, a sensitive place, apparently. So there's a whole list of things uh, that the judge lists that Senate Bill 2 was trying to encapsulate. And again, it was 26 different places. Um, and then the one last quote I did want to bring up from his uh, opinion that I thought was interesting, uh, that he states that the Supreme Court mentioned in Bruin that it is settled that certain relatively few locations are sensitive places while arms carry and, and can be prohibited consistent with the Second Amendment. So, uh, you know, I think when he says that this was basically essentially a slap in the face of the Supreme Court, yeah, when they say things like that in Bruin, you still do it. Of course, that's the decision you're going to get. But as of right now, you all should be aware that that law has gone into effect. We'll wait to see what the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals does with it. And then we'll go from there. Um, as always, please, if you are a subscriber, I appreciate you. I really, truly do. Please drop comments into uh, the boxes below. I do read this from time to time to get ideas, and I do put them into, if there's a specific question, into a queue, and, and hopefully we do get to them. We do get a lot of them. Um, as always, I hope you all have a great year, a good uh, New Year's, and everything's very productive for you. Um, and please keep up with all your firearms training. We need to do that. And try to take somebody shooting that's never been shooting before this year. Um, you know, I think firearms rights are at a crossroads in some ways, and we need to keep uh, an interest going, right? You know, I talked to a good friend of mine who's a lifelong hunter. I'm, for those of you that know me closely, know that I'm not. I have nothing against hunting. I'm fully supportive of hunting. And I do hunt. I just didn't grow up deer hunting, which is a tradition where I'm from in central Ohio, or in western Ohio. Um, but I do bird hunt and things like that. But nevertheless, um, I talk to my hunter friends, and they say the younger generation is not doing it as much. So I encourage you guys to try and introduce somebody to hunting or something in the firearms world. Uh, let's keep this tradition alive and healthy. And as always, be safe and carry on. Yeah.